and welcome back to LW Pharmacy School channel. We have missed you all. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. I'm so glad that 2020 is over and that we are finally in a place where we can have hope and peace and faith that things will work out in our favor. I also have something new for us. Um, this shirt says, oh honey, I am certified right? Because I know that as we continue to grow and as we continue to do, you know, all of what we are come to do and to get this certification, we want to make sure that we proclaim it so everyone will know around us, oh honey, I am certified, right? So um, today we're going to be talking about reasons to compound. And if you don't know, that is a part of the PTCB as well as the EXCPT exam this year. Um, I do want to let you know that there are not a lot of changes that have been made. Everything is pretty much still the same. And so if you've been studying with me, you're on the right track. You can continue to study with me, okay? Another thing I'm going to mention very quickly because I want to get on to the lesson is if you are studying from this book <clears throat> that I recommend, kudos to you, but I will tell you that you need an expert like myself to help you study this book. If you are studying this book by yourself and you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling like you're not doing it right and you just feel really confused, it's because you need an instructor. You need an expert to study this book. There are things that I have put in my, re my review course, our pharmacy technician, course for four weeks okay look at that that i put secrets and tips and clues in there that i cannot say on youtube so if you're studying that book and you're struggling that's why um let's look at my girl right here she is compounding and she is paying attention and just really trying to make sure that she's getting it right i want you to pay attention to her glove she is gloved right she also has on a lab coat um, her hair is pulled back. She is compounding in a non-sterile environment, which is what we're talking about today. If she was compounding in a sterile environment, her hair would not be allowed to be out. Um, she wouldn't be able to have those earrings out. Just different things would be a lot different. The environment would look different. But because she is doing this here, she is able to compound in this manner because it is a non-sterile environment. Let's talk about this. Why do we compound? Why do we compound? We compound because the patient requested it. We compound for pediatric patients and we compound for patients with sensitivity. Okay, so when you think about sensitivity, we're talking about patients who, you know, may have a hard time swallowing medication. They may, you know, may not like the texture of a certain medication that, you know, in their, their mouth or what, what have you. Um, we do know there's granules and just different things that come inside of this medicine that could really turn the patient off. And let me tell you something, if the patient is turned off by the way that the medication tastes, the way that the medication feels, the way that it smells, the way that it looks, they will not take it. You can bet your highest dollar that they will not take a medication that they do not like the taste, the look, the smell, the feel, okay? That's the five senses, right? I'll tell you, like, I literally, uh, not too long ago, cooked some vegan burgers, and um, I cooked them for my family or whatever, and they ate it, but I didn't, because I didn't like the way it smelled, and so I just, I fought for pineapples, okay? Um, what is the preparation of a specific dosage form for a patient with specific needs called? What is the preparation of a specific dosage form for a patient with specific needs called? I want you to think about that. Remember, we're talking about compounding, okay? We're talking about compounding. And this particular lesson is going to be about non-sterile compounding. That's something that so many people tend to overlook. A lot of the times we don't want to really focus on it. And there are so many times that the answer is right in front of us, but we are struggling to get to that answer because we don't have the background or we don't have Lindsay's secret tips and clues, okay? So um, it says, what is the preparation of specific dosage forms for a patient with a, with a specific need? If you said C, then you are correct, okay? Extemporaneous compounding. That is the name of a specific dosage form for a, a patient with a specific need, okay? 
non-sterile compounding categories, right? Now here, we want to talk about more of what these categories look like. Um, you have non-sterile compounding categories. So we have simple, which is the official USP monograph, which means that the details are included in a written study. That means that this is the way that we do this. This is the way that it's always been done and it's been documented to work this way, okay? Uh, the second one says moderate. So the second level is moderate. So that means it requires special calculations. This is where my friends get a little confused and a little worried because they're wanting to make sure that they have all of their calculations correct, so on and so forth. While I do applaud you of trying to make sure that you do have the calculations and all of that together, I want you to remember that your pharmacist is there to support you just as well as your tech and training, uh, your technician lead, sorry, not tech and training, but your lead technician is also going to be there to support you as well. Um, to help you with those calculations. But if you are struggling with special calculations and you know that you want to be a compounding technician, come, come see me. Come and see me because I'm still helping people to pass, okay? We've helped over 5,000 people become certified since 2014. So if you are still struggling with this, put this behind you, honey. It is 2021 and you need to be able to say, oh, honey, I am certified, okay? Okay, um, complex. The third one is complex. It requires special training. The environment has to be perfect. The facilities need to be together and the equipment needs to be laid out and put in place so we can begin to do this complex, complex special training for non-sterile compounding, okay? So there are three categories. You have simple, moderate, and complex, okay? Let's look at the next one. Oh, before, before we move on to the next one, if you've been watching this video for the last seven minutes, honey, and I have helped you already, subscribe to this channel. Your subscription keeps me encouraged on days when I don't feel like my help is helping. Now, here is a compounding question that I want you to think about. It says, which of the following pieces of equipment would not be used in an ex extemporaneous compounding? Which of the following pieces of equipment would not be used in an extemporaneous compounding setting? Think about what you just learned. Think about the clues I just gave you. Would it be a class A balance? Would it be a compounding slab? Would it be a graduate cylinder? Or would it be a laminar flow hood? Think about this. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it. Which of the following pieces of an equipment would not be used in extemporaneous compounding? If you select the D, laminar flow hood, put yourself on the back. Yes, that is the correct answer, okay? I want you to know, and I want you to remember that when you are thinking about extemporaneous compounding, we are talking about non-sterile compounding, right? This is something that does not require a laminar flow hood because a laminar flow hood takes place where? Where does the laminar flow hood takes place? In the sterile environment. So if you are compounding non-sterile, you don't need a laminar flow hood. Don't let that trick you. Do not get tricked up by the word compounding and automatically think hospital, sterile, flow hood type of deal. Enjoy talking to y'all today and I cannot wait to come back and see you again. I want you to continue to push. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't run. Don't hide. Okay, because y'all be hiding. Don't hide. This is your year. This is your time to have everything that you've ever desired, that you've ever wanted in your life. I believe it and now you need to believe it. Continue.